L'azienda farmaceutica ABV ha fatto e sta facendo la storia nella cura delle patologie autoimmuni su base reumatologica, dermatologica e anche gastroenterologica. L'azienda oggi ha in commercio tre molecole ma la sua ricerca procede incessante. Noi ci siamo fatti raccontare cosa bolle in pentola, da chi queste cose ovviamente le conosce molto bene, dal professor Timothy Ratzkeik, vice president dei Global Health Immunology della Discovery Research di ABV. Lo abbiamo incontrato qui a Sorrento, a margine dell'evento Remarkable organizzato appunto dalla sua azienda. Tim, first of all, uh, tell us something about the team you are leading, the team of Discovery for ABV, uh, which are the people working with you, and also which is the connection between Discovery and uh, medical development? Yeah, I'm glad to do so. Um, so, first of all, we are spread over three locations. Uh, we have two locations at the East Coast, um, in Cambridge, Worcester, which is about 40 miles out of Boston. And then we have a location in Chicago where our headquarters is based. Um, we have a very diverse team. Um, there are um, MDs, physicians, um, biologists, uh, scientists overall, um, but there are also computational biologists, people who know how to handle data and to make like, big data into molecules. Um, so that's my own department, but as you understand, big data is not everything, right? You have to make a molecule which eventually goes into a medicine. And so we have a very strong collaboration with our chemists, um, with our uh, people from what we call biotherapeutics, who make protein. Um, and then if, if an asset goes on the pipeline, there's more and more work with, together with our cross-functional stakeholders. Um, and then you ask me, when is, is a molecule handed over to clinical development? Um, clinical development is in Chicago, um, and usually we have a strong collaboration with clinical development kind of early in the process. Um, that's where precision medicine, another part of the organization, comes in as well. Uh, and around um, when a molecule goes into what we call um, tox studies, so safety studies, it's basically when clinical development becomes the lead of a program. Um, still, though, um, it, the group becomes bigger and bigger as an asset moves forward. Right? So uh, we basically never let a molecule go until it's really into a patient. And which are the current challenges uh, you are dealing with your team of scientists in your discovery lab? Yeah, so I, I guess actually that's not necessarily only for EPFI. I think the biggest challenge pharma has is how to break through the ceiling effect of treatment. Uh, so if you compare like 20 or 30 studies in rheumatoid arthritis trials, you always see the same number of patients respond to therapy. And so there is still a huge gap in, for example, getting patients into a cure. Um, and how, how to break through a ceiling effect is a big question in, in pharma. And, and we, what we are doing uh, within our drug discovery is to really work from human data sets, get samples from patients, tissue and blood samples, and really make sense out of the data and go as fast as we can and try to minimize the time that a molecule is in discovery and go in patients as quickly as possible. Uh, you're working to discover, hopefully, the new class of medicine which could ameliorate the life of patients through a more personalized treatment. How they would work or should work and under which principles? Yeah, so that's a very good question. Um, and uh, within APFI, we are convinced that um, where we are currently is that we don't understand disease well enough to say, okay, um, that patient needs that medicine and that patient needs that medicine. And that's why I said before, we have to really understand disease on a molecular level. So we are heavily investing in understanding what we call molecular signatures. And that also means that you go away from a diagnosis approach. So in the end, I think in five to 10 years from now, we are treating patients based on the molecular signature and maybe not group them into a diagnosis. Uh, which automatically means you're treating them in a precision medicine mode because you're regrouping patients based on that molecular fingerprint, so you know exactly what group of patients to give what medicine at what time. You have good signs that you will succeed? I, I'm completely convinced that that will happen. Yeah, it's just a matter of time.